All right, welcome back. What we're going to work on today is chapter 19, and it has to do with factors and prime numbers. Um, this is the point in math where uh, it is very important that you understand your multiplication tables. So if you do not know your multiplication tables, you need to go home and study. You need to find little games on the computer, play them um, as much as you possibly can. Play them like your life depends on it. Um, and I know you guys can. You guys play video games. You guys are good at sports. Once you focus on something, you get good at it. And so that's the same thing with uh, multiplication facts. Um, okay, so what is a factor? A factor is a number that is multiplied in order to find a product. So let's say 3 times 7 equals 21. The 3 and the 7 are both factors. Um, Let's do 4 times 9 is 36. 4 and the 9 are factors. And of course, uh, the answer is the product. Um, so we're going to keep working on this. Uh, you got to know your factors because we're going to start talking about division. And um, there's no way around it. You just got to know your factors. All right, let's take 24, for example. 24 is a product, and we're going to find all the factors that when we multiply these two factors together, that we're going to get a product of 24. So let's start with 1. Always start with 1, because 1 times the number um, always gives you that number. So we know that 1 and 24 are factors of 24. Um, let's go with 2 now. 2 times what number is 24? Uh, 12. So we know that 2 and 12 are also factors. Let's try 3. 3 times 8. You have to know your multiplication facts because you get to 4 and you're like, ah, nothing, I don't know. Yeah, 4 is not a factor for 24. That's incorrect. So remember, 4 times 6 is 24. So it's very important to know your multiplication facts. Um, and we're going to stop there because 5 times blank equals 24. There's not a whole number that we can stick right there that is a factor. If you multiply it by 5, that will give you the product of 24. Um, I like doing uh, what I call rainbow factoring. Uh, that will help you determine all the factor or find all the factors for a given number. So if you're going to factor out 24, we know that 1 and 24 are always factors. Okay? The next one is 2 and 12. Those two are, are pairs. So notice I'm doing a little, uh, I'm, I'm connecting the pairs of the line. The pairs of numbers that when combined equal 24. Then we have 3. That's going to be 8. And then our last pair is 4 and 6. Okay? Once you, once you um, get to the very center of these factors, 5 is not a factor, then you know that you have every single factor for 24. Okay, go ahead and do this next problem by yourself. Find all the factors, um, rainbow style, for 1 and 28. Go ahead, pause your computer, and then when you come back, when you have your answers, uh, you can restart. All right, so we know that 1 and 28 are factors. Uh, what's the number that pairs with 2? Well, we know that is 14. 2 times 14 is 28. What's the number that pairs with 3? You do not have a whole number that pairs with 3, so we're not going to use 3 as a factor. Erase it. Um, and we have 4. What's the number that pairs with 4 to get 28? That is 7. Okay, so those are the factors for 28. All right, so go ahead and give me the factors for 1 and 32. Pause the YouTube uh, video and then come back when you're done. All right, there are your factors for 32. 1 and 32, 2 and 16, and 4 and 8. All right, so give me all the factors for 5. There. And we're done. Um, this is what is called, 5 is what is called a prime number. A prime number does not have any factors other than itself and 1.
that's it. Small rainbow. Um, let's go, here's another prime number, 1 and 7. Give me all the factors. That's it. There aren't any factors that when multiplied together will give you 7, other than 1 and 7. The, the word prime means 1, or number 1. Um, primary cover, color, so those are the first colors, number 1 colors. Uh, primary school, that's the first school you go to. Um, see if I can, prime rib, that's the first part of the rib, or the best. A lot of people use prime to, to uh, describe something that's the best, or the number one ranked, if you were ranked the quality of a certain product in order from least to greatest, prime would be the best. Um, so, you guys are my prime students, the best students. Um, let's go ahead and do another one. One and nine. Is that a prime number? Is nine a prime number? No, it's not. And why isn't it a prime number? That is because you take three, you multiply three times three, you're going to get nine. So there is another factor besides the two outside ones, okay? Um, so that's what a prime number is. I'm going to list some prime numbers really quick. All right, so we already kind of went over a couple of them, but the uh, 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 7. Uh, and you guys kind of already understand why these are prime numbers. That's because you can't, um, there aren't any factors when multiplied together that will result in these as a product. Um, so let's go ahead and write the next four prime numbers. Go ahead and do that on your own. All right, so we're going to start talking about um, divisibility um, as we solve this problem. Divisibility is a way to find out how many, or if a number has factors or not. And if they have factors, then um, that number is not a prime number. So we can eliminate that, eliminate that number from our search. But how do we do this? We find if these numbers are divisible. Okay, so is 8 divisible by anything? So let's try it. 8 divided by, if we can find a number right here, that means that 8 is not prime. If we can't find a number that goes here, then 8 is prime, okay? So 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So 8, since we found a number that goes right in this plot right there, that means that 8 is not prime, okay? Is 9 divisible by a number? Yes, 9 is divisible by 3. So 9 is not prime. Keep going, is 10 divisible by a number? Yes, 10 is divisible by 5. So since we found a number right there, right there, 10 is uh, not a prime number. 11. Can 11 divide by a number equally? Yeah, we can't find a number that we can uh, divide 11 by. And so 11 is a prime number, okay? So let's keep doing this. There's nothing that goes there, nothing that goes there, and so that's how we know that 11 is prime. 12, 12 divided by four is what, three? Since we can divide it, it is divisible, it's not a prime number. 13, can you divide that and get an even answer? Nope. So 13 is a prime number. 14 divided by 7 is 2. If I'm able to divide it, it is not prime. 15 divided by 5 um, is 3, so 15 is not a prime number. 16 divided by 4 is 4, not a prime number. 17 is a prime number, can't divide it evenly. 18 divided by 9 is 2. 19, there you go. So those are the next four prime numbers. Let's talk about divisibility and this video will be done. All right, so let's talk about some divi divisibility rules. If is a number divisible by two? And we can tell if a number is divisible by two if um, the number ends in an even number. So here's an example. 
So if you have 3,458. Is this number right here, is it divisible by 2? Well, does this number end in an even number? 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0? And the answer is yes. So this number would be divisible by 2. All right, let's determine if a number is divisible by 3 or not. 3 or 15, can you divide it by 3 and get an even number? Well, the way you uh, determine that quickly, a little rule, is the sum of the di digits is divisible by 3. So sum means add. So we're going to take 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 5 is 9. Is 9 divisible by 3? The answer is yes. Therefore, 315 is also divisible by 3. All right, so these divisibility rules will help you determine if um, a number is prime or not. Uh, so is this number prime? Well, if the last two digits are divisible by 4, then you can divide the number by 4. Can we divide 8,412 by 4? And the answer is yes, because if you look at the last two numbers, you know that 12 is divisible by 4, which means 8,412 is also divisible by 4. All right, is a number divisible by 5? Let's try this. If the last, if it's divisible by 5, if the last digit ends in a 0 or a 5, then the number is divisible by 5. I'll write that real fast. Last digit is 0 or 5. Then it is divisible by 5. So does this end in 5? Yes. Therefore, the whole number is divisible by 5. All right, so if the number is divisible by 6, that means the number is both divisible by 2 and 3. So you've got to remember the divisibility rules that we just went over a second ago. So those divisibility rules are, does a number end in 2, 4, 6, or 8? And that is correct. 48 is um, divisible by 2. So check. Is it divisible by 3? Well, you've got to add the, digit, the sum of the digits and see if that number is divisible by 3. What's 8 plus 4? 8 plus 4 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3. So if it passes the litmus test of both 2 and 3, then you know that the number is also divisible by 6. So 48 is divisible by 6. All right, if the sum of the, the digits are divisible by 9, then the number is divisible by 9. So what's the sum of these digits? 7 plus 1 plus 1 is 9. Is 9 divisible by 9? The answer is yes. Therefore, 711 is also divisible by 9. And that's pretty much all we're going to talk about with factors, divisibility, and um, prime numbers. And so hopefully that helps. If you get stuck, um, rewatch the video and pause it at the moment you get stuck and keep rewatching it until you understand. Um, if you still don't understand, uh, contact me and hopefully I can do some one-on-one -on -one and catch you up. All right, appreciate your help.